Welcome, disc golfers, to another exciting episode of the Chain Clankers Disc Golf Podcast. I'm your host, Quentin Ferris, and today we've got an episode that's going to help you make some key decisions on the course. We're diving into the art of disc selection, focusing on five crucial points that can elevate your game. Let's get into it right now. And disc golfers, are you looking to elevate your game? Look no further than Upper Park Disc Golf. Thank you to Upper Park Disc Golf for sponsoring today's podcast. Their Pinch Pro Bag is a game changer with room for all your discs and gear. And here's the best part. You can use promo code CLINKERS10 at checkout to get an exclusive 10% off putting this bag under $100. That's right, 10% off your Pinch Pro Bag and more. Get the best disc golf bag on the market for under $100. You will not want to miss out on this fantastic deal. Visit Upper Park Disc Golf today and remember to use promo code CLINKERS10 for your discount. Let's tee off with point number one. In today's episode, we are breaking down disc selection. And the first point we have is understanding disc types. So to start this conversation, it's essential to grasp that there are three primary types of discs in disc golf. The first one is a driver. The second one is a mid-range. And the final one is a putter. And these discs you're going to see have different attributes about them, and they all have reasons for being used. And the main thing that I would say for drivers is, you know, they're designed for distance. It's got a a slimmer profile rim, and it's able to fight through the air a lot easier than compared to a mid-range but what a mid-range offers you is you're going to get more control because it's not as slim and because it's a little bit thicker and typically mid-ranges are a little bit heavier and we'll get into that in a little bit but what you're getting with mid-ranges is you're getting more control you're going to have a lot less left to right movement and it's going to be a lot straighter and then finally the putter Uh, This is what we use when we're up close to the basket, just either approaching and sticking and you don't want the disc to go very far or you're actually getting it into the chain. So knowing the circumstances and characteristics that you would use these types of discs will help you select the right disc in each situation. A great point here is if you're approaching the basket, you might want to use a putter if there's danger behind instead of using a driver as that driver could then skip and go out of bounds or into whatever that danger is. Let's move on to point number two. So disc speed and stability is very important here. Discs come in various speeds and different stabilities. Disc speed is indicated by the number on the disc. Typically, this is going to range from 1 to 14. If you're watching on YouTube right now, I've got a disc up on the screen, and it's showing you the flight numbers. Um, If you can't really read that, then I will make sure to put up a picture for those on YouTube. But the numbers that you have for the disc that I was looking at in particular is a Hades from Discraft. So it is a 12 speed, a 6 glide, a negative 3 turn, and a 2 for fade. And so what this means is the speed, that first number, that 1 to 14 number, really represents the stability of the disc in overstable versus understable. So overstable discs tend to fade to the left for right-handed players and are excellent in windy conditions. The more stable they are, the, the more you want to throw it into a headwind. Understable discs will turn to the right and are a lot more forgiving for beginners and newer players so understanding these characteristics help you choose the right disc for your skill level and situation and something that is really important about the flight numbers that not a lot of people talk about is that in order for you to access the glide turn and fade you have to throw the disc at the speed rating. If I take this Hades and I throw it at a 12 speed rating, then I'm going to access 6 glide, negative 3 turn, and 2 fade. I'm going to see that flight path out of the disc, all things equal. Whereas, if I take that mid-range that we had earlier, this Soul, 
right? And if I take this soul and its flight numbers are four, five, negative three, zero. So this is really good for newer players and beginners. So if I were to take this disc and I threw it at the same arm speed as a Hades, I'm going to turn and burn this disc into the ground to the right very quickly. And it's not going to end very well for me. So it's important to understand that how hard you throw the disc is going to impact the rest of the flight numbers. Let's take that same example with the Hades, but let's say I throw it at a soul's arm speed. So I throw it at a four arm speed. That Hades is going to be very overstable, and it's going to just dump to the left if I'm a right-handed player. That's because I did not throw it at the speed it needed to be in order to access the glide turn and fade. So that's something very important you want to know when it comes to disc selection. You have to be able to throw it at that speed rating to access the rest of the flight numbers. Let's talk about the third point now, and this is considering the disc's weight. So the weight of your disc can significantly impact your throw. Discs typically range from 150 to 180 grams. Lighter discs are easier to control but may be affected by the wind more. Heavier discs can resist the wind better but might require more power to throw. So you should be experimenting with different weights to find what works best for you in your throwing style and conditions on the course. So again, I'm going to bring up that sole that we've been using as an example in the podcast so far. If I were to throw this disc into a headwind, it's not going to be very good. Even though it's 180 grams, because of the understability, it's going to flip up and turn to the right very quickly, and I'm not going to get the desired outcome I want. Now, if I took the Hades that we were using earlier and I throw this Hades and it is a 150 gram Hades, that's going to act a lot different from a 175 gram Hades. The 175 gram Hades is going to react more overstable than the 150 gram. We are halfway through this episode, guys. Hopefully, if you're enjoying, leave a like rating on YouTube or leave us some positive feedback in the review section over on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. And let's take a quick break and hear from today's sponsors. All right, point number four, multiple discs of the same mold. Once you find a disc you love, consider carrying multiple discs of the same mold, but in varying stages of wear. As discs are used, they break in, becoming less stable and gaining more turn. This allows you to have different discs for different shot shapes, whether it's fresh overstable disc for a headwind or a well-worn in disc for a turnover shot this can give you the consistency and versatility you need on the course and so this is a great example of where having these three Hades in my hand right now if you're watching this podcast is very important because I can have one that is brand new never thrown I rarely use it and this is my overstable Hades that I'm going to throw into a headwind or if I need my shot shape to go to the left and then maybe I have a Hades that I'm intermittently using. You know, I'm using it every now and then. I, it's only been in my bag for maybe six months, and it gives me a little bit of flip up. It's, you know, going to be relatively straight. I'm not going to get a lot of turn, but I'm not going to get a lot of fade. And then I could have a Hades in my bag that has been there for two years. It's super beat in, and I know when I throw it, I'm going to get flip up and it's going to go to the right then now you have a disc for each kind of shot shape you need. And what's really important about that is, is when you find that one mold, you know how it feels in your hands. You know what you have to do with it because you've put the time and energy into that disc. This is a massive advantage compared to if you have three different discs to fit those shot shapes. So let's say instead of having those three Hades in my bag, let's say instead I have like a overstable disc from Discraft. So let's say Onyx. And then I have a straighter flying disc from Innova. Let's say like a T-Bird maybe. And then I have an understable disc from... Jeez, let's think of a company that's not what we've already used. Um, Prodigy, an F7, right? So 
now we've got three different discs that all feel different, all probably have a slightly different weight, different plastic, will react differently in the wind trying to access three different shots. That's going to make it harder for you. And then when you lose those discs, you've lost all your progress and you have to start again. Whereas when you have three discs of the same mold beaten in differently, you now can access multiple shot shapes by throwing the same exact mold. That's why it's better in your bags to have less discs overall. So you want to have, when, it, when I'm saying this, you want to have less um, variation in molds. You want to have like five molds in your bag and you have like three of them if you want to have a lot of discs in there. I think it's better to have less overall molds and have more of those discs in those molds, if that makes sense. Now let's wrap up our disc selection insights with point number five, field testing and practice. The most crucial aspect of disc golf selection is practice and experimentation. Spend time on the practice field trying out various discs and molds. Get to know how they fly under different conditions and your unique throwing style. Over time, you'll develop a reliable set of go-to discs for various shots and situations, boosting your confidence and performance on the course. This is super important and allows you to get to a place where you can take away three rando discs and replace it with one mold and this will also be beating in those discs more. You're going to beat your discs in if you go in and actually practice with them. So another point as to how you can beat your discs in and your disc selection will improve. And overall, if your disc selection improves, your disc golf game should improve. I mean, that's the reason you're still watching or listening to this point, right? You want your disc golf game to improve. And if you want to continue to see your disc golf game improve, make sure you follow us on Instagram and TikTok at Chain Clankers Disc Golf. We're posting content Monday through Friday that is giving you tips and tricks to become a better disc golfer. So if you like this podcast, we know you're going to love our daily content over there. Make sure you go check it out, follow, and become a better disc golfer today. That is going to wrap up today's episodes. These were five essential points to guide you through the world of disc golf disc selection. Remember, it's not just about having the latest and greatest discs. It's about understanding the characteristics and finding out what works best for you. With that said, get out to the field, go practice, beat those discs in, and we will see you guys next week.